Hello everyone, welcome to our virtual presentation, The Use of Innovative Tools for Teaching Entrepreneurship. My name is Elisa and together with my colleagues Maria, Ignacio and Jose Luis, we all work for the Business Administration Department in the University of Cantabria in Spain. We all teach courses related to entrepreneurship, such as creation of companies and family firms, both in English and in Spanish, and setting up businesses. Our students have different backgrounds. Some of them are from the Business Administration degree, the Economics degree, Labor Relations degree, and we also have a lot of Erasmus students. This means that our students have different experiences, contexts and objectives. Most of them, in fact, don't want to set up a new business in the future. Our main concern is how to balance such a diverse audience. We need to select the best learning tools in order to teach several and different concepts with different objectives, so we combine various methodologies. Bennett described the innovative methods as those that demand the teacher to stimulate learning and encourage students to rediscover themselves in terms of their abilities, knowledge and attitude. Our objective is that our students have a better follow-up of the course, acquiring various skills and abilities and being more motivated and engaged. Do you want to discover those methodologies? Let's do it! First, we use cooperative learning. Cooperative learning is a teaching method where students of mixed levels of ability are arranged into groups and rewarded according to the group's success, rather than the success of an individual member. In our courses, students need to make groups and write a business plan from a business idea designed by themselves. Teachers demand partial submissions during the course and provide feedback so that students can improve their projects until the final submission. In this assignment, they can achieve various skills such as face-to-face -face interaction, positive interdependence, individual accountability, group processing and collaborative skills. Another technique we use is the jigsaw technique. Due to restrictions in the number of students and in time, we usually perform an adaptation of the jigsaw technique. With this technique, students have the opportunity to become experts in a particular subject and share that knowledge with their peers. The jigsaw technique consists of several stages. First, the students make small groups, home group, and allocate each one a number, for example, from one to seven. Second, they find others with the same number and create a separate group, the expert group, where they are going to discuss their piece of the puzzle, a concept or, in our case, a segment of a task, and determine a way to explain it to others. Third, they go back to their home group and report their piece of the puzzle. Finally, they have to connect the pieces and understand the whole picture. With this technique, students increase the reading comprehension and acquire the ability to sum up. We use the jigsaw technique to learn about the steps to identify the target market of the business project, something they can use later in their projects. Within the commercial viability of their business projects, students have to test their products or services with their peers who become potential customers. In this way, we form groups of students with representatives of each business project. Thus, all team members need to know their project and especially need to know how to communicate, explain and defend their product or service, their pricing policy, their distribution policy and their promotion actions. The most important issue about this technique is to obtain feedback, also different ideas or points of view, from their peers, potential customers, and especially sensitivity to the proposed variables. After speaking with other colleagues, the students return to their original groups and share the information. This allows them to modify and improve their projects based on the comments received, and also improve their face-to-face -face interaction and their collaborative skills. 
One of the activities that students like and value most is the Entrepreneur Fair. With the Entrepreneur Fair, we simulate a situation whereby students could have more choice in creating and operating their own businesses. In a real fair, the students have the opportunity to sell their own products. We provide real examples with even smaller students. In our simulation, our students have the opportunity to evaluate their resources. They use colored pens and papers to create their stands, assess the market, and develop a plan to advertise their products and services to attract their customers. Here you have real examples of the entrepreneur fair of this course. Results are shared on social networks to promote the competitive spirit and communication. Once they have the business project, they need to communicate it. That is why we use several techniques to enhance communicative skills. One of them is the elevator pitch. An elevator pitch or elevator speech is a brief overview of an idea for a product, service or project delivered in the time span of an elevator ride. The purpose of using the elevator pitch is to compel students to prefer a short explanation of their business projects. The main benefits of this technique are to promote the ability to summarize and communicate the project in a focused way, one to three minutes. We have a lot of students and a lot of groups in some of our courses, so they need to be able to present their projects in a short period of time. Another example to enhance communicative skills is storytelling. Storytelling is the art of telling stories and it has benefits that transcend the academic context. Students are provided with storytelling techniques in order to attract and engage the recipient of their ideas, investors, customers, or other entrepreneurs. In order to be more attractive to the audience, stories need to include a purpose, create a connection with the audience, promote trust and transparency, and keep the interest. Finally, we use social media to engage our students. The experiences of the use of social media in the university environment are not new and it is proven that they can favor the teaching learning process. We have created a Twitter profile in this course because the content and structure of the courses we teach allow us to take advantage of many of its failures. In our case, with the Twitter profile, we can interact continuously with the students, reminding them important dates, we can generate commitment among students, promoting and encouraging participation. We can generate interactions and networking. We share information on Twitter about the guest speakers we have had during the course. We can also share the latest news almost immediately on topics related to entrepreneurship, blog entries, events and awards, examples of ideas and business projects, etc. And finally, we can use hashtags to follow conversations about a certain subject. After describing the tools used, we have some conclusions. We consider that these techniques work out because they all revolve around the development of the business project. The courses we teach about entrepreneurship are so multidisciplinary that allow us the application of different techniques adapted to the type of contact we wish to address but it is the combination of these methodologies adapting them to the learning objectives which favors the success of teaching entrepreneurship. And that's all. We hope you like our presentation. Thanks for watching. Bye.